I am Dave DeHilser. I'm a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science, something your university professors won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. Well, there's been a lot of discussion in the comments areas about the LIGO experiment and my one video on that, which says we cannot, we can either disprove or prove that they are finding gravity waves. I don't think people are really satisfied with that because when they read it, it seems pretty simple. It is a very simple setup, but I don't think people are satisfied. They go, come on, Dave. This makes sense. You just can't say throw it out. You're always throwing it out. Of course, I get the comments about that all the time. Then I can throw it out. And, uh, well, what would you do? Well, we do have an answer, so stick or to the end of this thing because I'm going to tell you what our model tells you about it, but it's totally preliminary. But we have a real model. Anyways, we're going to look at a video that's over 10 years old. Why? Because in the be in the part that I'm going to show you is just too much fun. As a critical thinker, I just fell off my chair when I saw this. So here we go. Let's take a look at this older video. And we're going to examine the LIGO gravity detector in detail as a critical thinker. The key to Ray's idea lies in the way a gravity wave distorts the fabric of space. This is what happens to space itself. It stretches in one direction and it compresses the other. It collapses up and down and it stretches sideways. And here's a gravity wave at a certain frequency. The frequency is once a second or something like that. That's what it does. <laughs> I love that. Mm -hmm. First, this is, folks, I say first, folks, this is the first. The guy is playing space time. And now, with Beethoven's Seventh Symphony, we have our physicist and playing space time, as represented by a plastic, what do they call those? Mesh, a plastic mesh. <sighs> <laughs> you know what I'm going to say, especially if you're a critical thinker. This is what they said. The announcer said, uh, we will distort the fabric of space. That's what he said. Not space-time. We will distort the fabric of space. Not space-time. Those are his first words. The second thing the scientist said is, "We it happens that we... That space stretches. So one person says the fabric of space. Another person says space stretches. I'm sorry. I cannot, I cannot accept this. The only way things bend or stretch is if there's something physical there. Period, period, period. There is no other way. You can't bend nothing. Space is the place in which matter moves and matter is something and space is nothing. That's what it is. So how can we say we're detecting gravity waves if we don't even know and can't give physicality to space-time? It's, 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 it's not a, a plastic mesh. It's not mathematics. It's not tensor equations like some of my, some, some of my friends who are intellectuals and love math. They go, tensor equation is real. No, it's not. So this is one of the problems I'm saying. Space-time, this mesh he's talking about, sorry, they don't say what it is, never do. They call it fabric, they call it space, they call it the fabric. I say it over and over and over again. Okay, let's go on and watch some more. To measure the stretching and squeezing, Ray turned to a device called an interferometer. A laser beam is split and sent down a pair of long perpendicular tubes, each precisely the same length. The two beams bounce off mirrors and recombine back at the base. The light waves come back lined up in such a way that they cancel each other out. And you add them together, you get nothing. You get a zero, a big fat zero. No light gets detected at the photodetector. But when a gravity wave comes along, it distorts space and changes the distance between the mirrors. One arm becomes a little longer, the other a little shorter. An instant later, they switch. This back and forth stretching and squeezing happens over and over until the wave has passed. 
As the distances change, so does the alignment between the peaks and valleys of the two returning light waves. And the light waves no longer cancel each other out when added together in the recombined beam. Now some light does reach the detector with an intensity that varies as the distance between the mirrors varies. Measure that intensity and you're measuring gravity waves. The light measure that intensity and you're measuring gravity waves. Remember what I always say at the end of my stocks, don't take my word for it. Stay critical, stay thinking. This is exactly one of those times. Measure the, in, the change of intensity of the light, and you're measuring gravity waves. Ta-da! By my, by my fantasies, by my fairy tale, up to this point, by, what did he say? What does the narrator say? Gravity waves distort space. <gasps> no, it doesn't distort space. Something has to be distorting if it's distorting. So, again, how can we do anything? Well, let's take a, a look at what this experiment is about. Well, it's an interferometer. For those of you who don't know that, that's a really great way of measuring very small changes. If you put an inter interferometer, a very good one, on top of a, be a beam, get, get a huge beam it's, that's huge for a skyscraper. That's just the biggest beam you can, made out of steel. Put an interferometer on it. You push your little finger on one side, and you're going to see it bend. Well, of course, no one can see it. You wouldn't think it would bend. But it does. Why? Because interferometers use change can measure changes at very, very, very teeny weeny weeny changes. Why? Because of light waves being the light split comes back and you have interference patterns. Okay. So if you see interference patterns, that's because the whole apparatus is moving. Well, that's what you say. Can you show that? Why do you know that? There are so many things that can be happening there. Number two, do we don't even know what light is. So we're using light. We don't know what gravity is. We don't know what light is. Yet we are making all of these assumptions. Yes, we shoot light through and we it, it's in waves and they come back and there's an interference. And they say that there is an interference. Now this is where people don't understand modern physics. And someone who does understand modern physics at this level is Dr. Alexander Unsiker, who on Facebook put a diagram of the three detectors, and they're all supposedly detecting the wonderful neutron stars bashing together and the gravity waves. And what do they measure it with? They measure it with what they call signals. Now, when you look at particle accelerators, and you, you hit all these particles together, and you get all these trails. Of course, you can't see the real stuff. You look at those trails, you're going to look for a trail that looks specifically like something, maybe Mickey Mouse ears, and when you find it, you declare, you found gravity waves. No, you found the Higgs boson. So this idea, and they had two teams on the big, the, the Large Hadron Collider. They had two teams independently, and they both found it independently with different methods. Of course, they're going to find it. They're going to spend all that billions of dollars and say, hey, you know what? <laughs> this is all a joke. In fact, you can throw out all particle physics from 1930s. We're tired of lying. Nope. So are they, dete they detecting signals? What are those signals? What are those things? What are they? What is that interference? Is it really what they're saying? Are those really signals? Or is that something in a setup that's just giving you inter in all kinds of stuff? Because there's going to be times where this thing is going to get, get uh, signals when it ain't what they think is gravity waves. And of course, they've eliminated that. Oh, of course. Oh, oh, oh Dave, we've eliminated all this. You would, why don't you read the paper? Well, I would need to see it. But okay, even if I saw it, you still have the major problem of having no, no model for any of this. And finally, the last thing is, okay, Dave, you're so smart. What is it doing then? Well, let's assume, let's assume for now that those signals are happening. And let's say they are detecting something. And let's say that they're supposedly like gravity waves. 
that the contraction, let's say the contraction is real, that the contraction and expansion of these arms are real. Let's say that's real. Oh, Dave, do you have an answer? Well, we do have a model. Uh, light and gravity and electricity and magnetic fields all traveling at the speed of sight. Oh, at the speed of C, well, they're the same particle in our model called the G1 particle. And gravity is caused by the shadowing effect of all these particles flying around and light is just simply waves of the same particle. So we have this in our model. And for these things to expand and contract for a quote unquote gravity waves, they wouldn't be our G1 particle. G1 particles is what they're looking at in our model, in this model. In our model, nope, they're G2 particles. What are G2 particles? Well, G1 particles are light and gravity and all that. Magnetic, what? Mag magnetic fields. Now, magnetic fields of G1 particles going around and around a magnet, which we say it is in our model, what makes it go around? Well, like G1 particles is gravity to planets and suns and comets, G2 particles like gravity for G1 particles and nucleons. That is the orbitals of atoms and the nucleus of atoms. It keeps them in orbit just like everything else, but it's a level down. It's G2. So my father, his hypothesis right now, and this is just hot off the presses, and we're not saying it's the right answer, but ooh, we have a model we can at least try. He says they are waves of G2 particles. Now that's gravity, but that's gravity too. That's a whole different thing because our, our model has infinity up and down. G1, G2, G3, G4, G4. So there's your answer. We have a model, so we can basically go through and try to model all of this and see what's really happening in the in real physical terms. So that's what me, me, myself, and I, Dave the Hilster, thinks when we look at something like the LIGO gravi Gravitational Wave Observatory. That's what they call it. So that gives you an, my answer. Much more detailed. This is why I say we don't know what they're detecting. According to our model, they ain't detecting gravity waves. They're detecting G1 particles, as they would, they would say is grav what we call gravity. They're doing gravity too, a whole level down in the universe. But no, well, you got to have mine accepted. Dave, your model's accepted. Don't care what you think. We're using a model and it's working pretty well. We're hacking the universe and we've hacked awful lot of stuff with it. Oh, the uh, dispersion where light turns into rainbow. They don't know how that works at all. They say marching soldiers slow down in a prism. That's the mainstream's answer. Oh, how about um, the quantum mechanics double slits with the detector? Why does it change from a pattern to a, looks like from a particle to a wave? We have the answer. My dad answers that with our model. That should win a Nobel Prize, right? No one cares right now, right now, right now. So anyways, I can go on and on and on and on and on. I hope this will help you as critical thinkers and see from a point of view. No, they don't have a model for light. No, they have a model for gravity. Here's experimental setup. Here's what's happening. They don't really know it because if you don't have a model, you can't really explain it. You can conjecture and we who have a model can maybe give you an answer. There you go. So like I said all the time, don't take my word for it. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I'm Dave D. Hilster. I am your science therapist, hoping you are starting to continue to learn, starting to continue to be learning how to be a critical thinker. Ciao for now.